In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the new Event Replay feature to sync events for late joiners. This feature was introduced in CyanTrigger version 0.4 and cannot be used with older versions. When an event is set to broadcast using Send to All, the replay option will become available. There are three options for event replay replay once, replay parity, and replay all. Replay once will save if the event has fired at all, and replay at one time for users who join after. This can be used for one-time events, or used to set state in a multi-state system. Replay parity will save if the event has fired at all, and replay at one time if it was fired an odd number of times, or replay at two times if it was fired an even number of times. Replay parity is intended for events that toggle object states. Replay all will save if the event has fired at all, and replay it for every time it was fired. Replay all is intended for events where counting is required. Along with event replay options, a new action called clear replay has been added. The clear replay action will reset all replay data for a given event, as if it had never fired. Using clear replay is necessary when you have multiple events with replay that modify the same objects or properties. Now, you might be thinking that event replay sounds very similar to SDK2's buffered triggers. They may be similar, but they are not the same and will act differently. There are two major differences that you need to be aware of when using replay. The largest difference is that replay does not keep the call order for events. In SDK2, order is kept when calling buffered events. With Cyan Trigger, replayed events will always play in the order they were defined in the trigger. When comparing Cyan Trigger on different objects, the replay order could change every time. Here's an example comparing SDK2's VRC trigger and Cyan Trigger. On interact, call a custom to disable an object, then call a custom to enable the object. In SDK2, the game object will always be enabled as that was the last event to be called. In Cyan Trigger with replay, the game object will be enabled for those in the room, but will be disabled for late joiners. This is because late joiners will always replay the enable event first, and then replay the disable event second, leaving the object disabled. This is where the clear replay action is used to determine exactly what happens for late joiners. The next difference between replay and SDK2 buffering is that the object's enabled state matters. SDK2 doesn't care if the object or VRC trigger is enabled. Buffered events will always execute for late joiners even when the object is disabled at start. For replay to work properly, both the game object and the udon behavior must be enabled at start. If either are disabled at start, then users will not act on the replay data until the object is enabled. This means that if a replay event is fired before the object is enabled, users in the instance will fire the event and also replay it when the object is enabled, overcounting it. Both of these differences are caused by how replay is handled behind the scenes. In short, it's caused by both Udon limitations and my own design decisions to make this even possible. If you want to know more details, the end of the video will explain how Replay actually works. With all that said and out of the way, it's time to get into Unity. All assets for this tutorial are included in the free example project called Cyan Key. You can download Cyan Key from my booth page. This tutorial scene can also be downloaded for free from my Patreon. Information on Event Replay can also be found on the Cyan Trigger wiki. Links to all of these are in the description. The first example will show how to sync a one-time event. A one-time event is something that will happen exactly once and should never be triggered again. This can be many different things such as replacing objects in your world or even used to sync progress in your game. For this video, I will show how to sync breaking this table. Looking at the hierarchy, we have two game objects, one with the normal table, another with the broken table. On the parent of both of these, there's already a collider and a cyan trigger added. We just need to fill in the logic. The first step is to add an interact event. In order to break the table, the normal table should be disabled and the broken one should be enabled. Add a gameObject.setActive action. Drag the broken table in and ensure it is set to true. Duplicate the event. Drag the normal table in and set it to false. To ensure that this can only happen once, add the udon behavior dot set disable interactive action. This will prevent the object from being highlighted and interacted with after being broken. Set the udon to this udon behavior and set it to true. With this, we can click the table to break it. 
but this only happens for me locally. In order to sync this with the people in the room, set the broadcast to send to all. This doesn't apply to late joiners, so we need to set the new replay option to replay once. With that, this event will sync for those in the room and for those who join late. The next example will show how to sync objects that are toggled multiple times. When using action set toggle a state, it modifies the previous state to get to the new state. This means it needs to know more information than replay once provides. When you toggle an object twice, it will be back to the original state. For toggles, we basically need to know if it happened an odd or even number of times. This is where replay parity comes in. If an event happens an odd number of times, it will only replay once. If an event happened an even number of times, it will replay twice, which will be back to the default state for a toggle. After hearing all that, the only thing you need to remember is to use replay parity when working with toggles. The example itself is a simple light switch. There are three main objects, the on visual, the off visual, and the real-time light. The parent light switch object already has a collider and a cyan trigger. Add an interact event. Inside that, add the game object .toggle active action. Drag the three objects mentioned before into the action. And that is everything needed for the local toggle. To sync this for the people in the room, set the broadcast to send to all. To sync this for late joiners, set the replay option to replay parity. And with that, the sync toggle is done. Both the previous examples were for getting away with less information using replay events. If you need to save the total number of times an event is fired, because you are keeping track or counting something, then use replay all. This example specifically will show you how to set up a synced counter. Expanding the display hierarchy, there's a canvas with a text object to display the number. On the button object, there is a collider and a cyan trigger already. Since this cyan trigger will be counting, we need to add a variable to save that information. Expand the variables tab and add an int variable. Call it value. Now, add an interact event where we will update our counter. The first action we will need is int.addition. Set the first option to variable, then select the value variable. Keep the second option on input and put 1 to add 1 to our variable. In the final option, select the value variable again. This will store the results back into the variable. The value has been updated, but we still need to display this new value. Since we are using a UI text object to display it, we need our value as a string. Add the int.toString action. Set the first option to variable and select our value variable. Give the output variable a name, such as value string. With the value as a string, we can now set our display text. Add the text.setText action. Drag our text object into the first option. Set the second option to variable and select the value string variable. To sync this for the people in the room, set the broadcast to send to all. To sync this for late joiners, set the replay option to replay all. And now the counter is synced for everyone. So far, all the examples have been only one event modifying objects. What if we have a more complicated system that requires multiple events modifying the same objects? Let's revisit the toggle example, but being explicit with the actions. Instead of one event that handles everything based on the previous data, let's split it so that there is one event to handle the on or open state and another event for the off or closed state. Doing this means that we will have two events modifying the same values. As I mentioned in the beginning, this means we need to use the clear replay action. Looking over the hierarchy for this door example, we have three objects, the closed door object, the open door object, and the parent where all the logic will be stored. Both the open door object and the closed door object have a collider and a cyan trigger with an interact event. While not set up yet, these objects will only forward events to the parent object. Since these objects will be disabled at some point during the instance, we cannot put the replay events on them. On the parent object, there's only a cyan trigger. Let's add the first event. Add a new custom event. 
and name it open. For this event, we want it to always leave the objects in the open state, meaning the open object will be enabled and the closed object will be disabled. Add a gameObject.setActiveAction. Drag in the closed object and set it to false. Duplicate the action. Set the object to the open object and set it to true. Next, we need to make the close action. Duplicate the open action and rename it to close. In the two set active actions, flip the values. Set the closed to true and the open to false. Back on the open door object, add the udon behavior.send custom event action. Drag in the parent and select close. On the closed door object, add the send custom event action. Drag in the parent, but select open this time. At this point, the explicit toggle will work locally. To sync this for people in the room, set the broadcast to send to all for both events. To sync this for late joiners, set the replay option to replay once. There's still one more step. Since both these actions modify the same objects, we need to add the clear replay action to get proper ordering for late joiners. In the open event, add the clear replay action. Make sure to select the close event. And now to do the same for the close event, add the clear replay action and set it to the open event. With this, the explicit toggle is properly synced for everyone. Now, you may be thinking, that was a lot of steps just to do the same thing as the replay parity example. While that may be the case for a toggle, making events do explicit actions is a requirement for even more complex systems. A toggle can be considered as a two-state system, off and on. You go from the off state to the on state using the open event, and you go from the on state to the off state using the close event. What if we wanted to make a system that had even more states than just two? For this next example, we have a dresser, and only one drawer can be opened at a time. There are four states, and each state can go to any other state. The four states are all closed, top open, middle open, and bottom open. It may not make sense to ever have something this specific in your world, but hopefully you can use this example to build what you need for your use case. Checking the hierarchy, we have seven objects this time three closed drawer objects, one for top, middle, and bottom, three open drawer objects, one for top, middle, and bottom, and a parent object to hold all of the logic. Just like the door example, all the open and closed drawer objects have a collider and a sign trigger with an interact event. Each of these will only forward events to the parent object. So let's set up the parent object. Add a new custom event and name it close all. This event will set everything back to the default state for this dresser. To ensure the closed state, we need to turn off all open objects and turn on all closed objects. Add a gameObject.setActive action. Duplicate it five times so we have one for each of the open and closed objects. In the first, drag the top closed drawer and set it to true. In the second, drag the top open drawer and set it to false. Do this for the open and closed drawers of the middle and bottom too, keeping closed true and open false. With the close all event done, we can duplicate this three times to create the open events. Name them open top, open middle, and open bottom. Go through each event and make sure that the correct open drawer is now set to true and the closed drawer is set to false. With these events created, we can go back to the open and closed drawer objects and call the events. Add an udon behavior.send custom event to each one and call the proper event. All open drawers should call the close all event. Each closed drawer should call the corresponding open event. The dresser should work locally, going between each state properly. To sync this for people in the room, set the broadcast to send to all for all events. To sync this for late joiners, set each open event to replay once. 
since the closed state is the default state in the scene and does not need to be replayed. All of these events modify the same objects, so we need to add the clear replay action to ensure the correct state is called for late joiners. In the close all event, add the clear replay action and duplicate it two times. Set them to clear each of the open events. Now, to add clear replays to the other events. Each event should clear replay for the other two events. Make sure to not clear replay for itself. And with that, this complicated example is complete. Now that we are done with the examples, here are some recommendations when working with event replay. Keep game objects and udon behaviors enabled. This was mentioned in the beginning, as it is an udon requirement to sync properly. Use clear replay when multiple events modify the same properties. As shown in the last two examples, make sure that all replay events that modify the same objects always clear replay for the other events. Use manual sync. Do not use with continuous sync or VRC object sync. This wasn't mentioned during the tutorial, but event replay should be used with manual sync. You can check the sync mode by opening the sync settings on the cyan trigger. By default, it will auto set the sync mode. If the game object has a VRC object sync component or another Udon behavior uses continuous sync, the cyan trigger will use continuous sync. While replay can work with continuous sync, it will be network heavy. Don't do it. If your cyan trigger uses replay and you have object sync, you can move the replay events to a different object instead. You can also do this for objects that should be disabled at start, as long as the cyan trigger with replay events stays enabled. Next, do not use long delays with replay. Replay will work with delays, but late joiners will ignore the delays when replaying events. If you have a replay event with a long delay and somebody joins before the delay finishes, that person will replay the event before the people in the room have finished the delay for the event. Just be aware when using delays. And for the last recommendation, use variable sync instead of replay. Event replay is one form of syncing, but it is not the most efficient way to sync in Udon. I created replay to simplify late joiner sync by using only events and not require you to learn variables. Saying that, VRChat recommends that sync in Udon be done through variables. Learning how to use variables will help you to sync more complicated systems. Some things that were possible with SDK2's buffering cannot be done with event replay and must be done using variables. Variable sync can also cover more edge cases, as by default it handles both players in the room and late joiners with the same logic. If you want an intro how to use variables to sync in Cyan Trigger, you can watch my sync toggle tutorial. At this point, you've seen how to use replay, but what is it actually doing? The following screenshots are an oversimplification attempting to recreate it in Cyan Trigger. For every event with replay, a new synced int variable is also created. This int keeps track of how many times the event has been called and is incremented with each call. When someone joins, they will get all the replay int counts at once in on deserialization. It will go through each one in the order it was defined and check if it needs to replay that event. For replay once, if the int is greater than zero, it calls that event once. For replay parity, if the int is greater than zero, it'll call that event once. If the int is also divisible by 2, it'll call it again. For replay all, it will loop through the count and call the event that many times. The clear replay action will set the int variable back to 0. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you want to see more VRChat video tutorials, prefabs, or editor tools, please consider supporting. That's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions on the content of this tutorial, let me know in the comments or join my Discord. If you want to know what other things I'm working on, follow me on Twitter. Until next time, thank you for watching!